Hello, and welcome to the ninth video in my series on using the TI-83 series calculator. This video will focus on using regression, and will use linear and quadratic regression as examples. Regression is not too difficult to do, but it's not very user-friendly, and it requires that you know how to use certain commands and know where to go in a lot of different menus. You might not need to do this in your algebra class, it's kind of a statistics thing, but we do it at my university in our college algebra class, so I'm going to go over it here. Before we do anything, we're going to need to turn diagnostic mode on. This isn't in the mode menu, though. You need to go to the catalog, hit D to get to the D's in the list, then scroll down to diagnostic on. Hit enter to put it on the home screen, and then hit enter again to activate it. Regression can be done without turning diagnostic mode on, but it'll give us more information if we have it on. I know that the word diagnostic might be a little bit frightening, but it has nothing, it has nothing to do with anything other than regression. Now you don't need to run diagnostic on every time you do this. From now until the end of the semester, or whenever, you shouldn't need to do that again unless you completely clear the memory. Okay, so let's work with this set of data. We want to find the line of best fit for these coordinates. The first thing we need to do is make a list for the x values and a list for the y values. We do that by first hitting the stat button, which will take us to this menu, then hit edit, which will take us here. This screen is where you edit the lists on the calculator. You can see L1 and you can scroll to the right to L6 but we're just going to be dealing with L1 and L2. As you can see, I already have some data in L1 and L2, but I'm going to need to erase it to put in the new data. You can erase lists individually by scrolling up to L1 and then hitting clear, then enter, or you can go back to the stat menu and select clear list to clear all of the lists. So now I enter the values in for L1 and L2, which correspond to X and Y, respectively. Now let's take a look at these points on the graph. Hit second Y equals to get to stat plot. You see three plots available. Let's go to plot one. So I have a non-connected graph here. That's this here and I have my X values listed as list 1 and my Y values listed as list 2. Below that is what the points are going to look like. It doesn't really matter which one you pick, but you probably want to use either the first or the second one just because the third can be hard to see. You can turn it on here, but I'm going to go to the Y equals menu to turn it on. The reason why is because now that I have plot 1 set to list 1 and list 2 as my x and y coordinates respectively, I can change the data from the edit screen in the stat menu, and when I come to a new regression problem, I won't ever have to go into the stat plot again. So I just move the cursor up to plot 1 and hit enter. It can be turned on and off that way. So now plot 1 is highlighted, so I can go to the graph, and I see nothing. Why is that? Because the first point is 2020, but my screen is set on Z standard, which only goes up to 1010. So I go to the zoom menu and go to the second to last option, zoom stat. This arranges the window so that I can see the points for the plots. And there they are. So far we're just viewing the points though. Not, we haven't actually done any regression yet. To do that, we go to the stat menu, go to the second page, go down to the fourth option, that's linreg ax plus b. This will bring us back to the home screen. Now this is a little bit of a different kind of function in that you can't use it in, a, you can't use it in an expression, at least as far as I know, and you wouldn't even need to. Uh, so after linreg ax plus b, I enter the first list, that's L1. I do this by hitting second list, which is the second function of the stat key. Select L1, comma, then I enter L2 the same way, comma, and now I'm going to tell the calculator to store the result as Y1. So I hit the VARS key, go to the second page, select function, select Y1, but you can do any Y function that you want, and it puts Y1 on the home screen. 
I hit enter and it brings me to this page. It says that the lines of the form AX plus B, then it tells me what then it tells me what A is and what B is. It also tells me what R squared and R are. This more or less tells you how close the line is to the points. The closer to positive one they are, the better. This is what diagnostic on did. If we hadn't done that, these two things would be missing. Now putting Y1 at the end of that told the calculator to store the result as Y1. This is actually optional and can be left off if you just want to see what A, B, and R are, but you don't want to actually graph them. But since I've stored it as a Y1 function, I can go back to the graph and see the line compared with the points. Any other kind of regression that you'll use in an algebra class will work exactly the same way. Like I'm going to do the same thing with quadratic regression, this time storing as Y2. I take a look at the results and I see it's actually a lot closer than the line is. When I'm done with this, I can turn off the plot by deselecting it from the Y equals screen.